All right, thank you for your patience. Let's have a look at this example, All right? Um, but because we took a break, let's go back and uh, recheck, okay, what we have discussed, all right? So we were talking after the Euler's method, we were talking about, what is it, the, the, the hypothesis testing, right? We we're talking about this problem in particular. Not only is it hypothesis testing, but also is talking about the type 1 error and type 2 error. So we said that whenever we, re we uh, read a care uh, question, we need to think, uh, algorithmically, we, could, we have to think imperatively. So what I'm saying here is, yes, it, oh, it's all very important for me. What's the most important thing here is the choice is independent of the other student's choice. So uh, along with this disk random variable, this is going to be a disk random vari variable because it's accounting. We can do the uh, binomial distribution or Poisson distribution, okay? But here's the thing, you know, before we move over, you know, let me tell you, uh, if it's something with the hypothesis testing or any distribution kind for the Poisson or Normer, they will tell you that it's distributed by Poisson or Normer. So that's 100%. However, if it's not telling you any distribution, very likely that it's going to be binomial. Not always. But then you need to see if you are given a certain property of the binomial distribution. There's a Bernoulli trial. So each event must be independent, like the question suggests. And also you've got to have a fixed number of trial fixed number of the prob a fixed probability of success. Uh, and, 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 and before we talk about that, so let's then briefly go over what it means, the type 1 or type 2 error. So type 1 and type 2 error, is, yes, you're right. The type 1 error is quite trivial to find because it's going to be the equivalent to the uh, level of a significance. So that's great. That's just going to be alpha, you see. However, you need to understand what it means. This is the uh, probability of uh, critical region. Uh, given the null, right? So you're using whatever the uh, proportional parameter, such as mirror sigma, uh, uh, from the null hypothesis, okay? Uh, but for the uh, type 2 error, that's going to be prob probability of acceptance region with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the difference, with the true distribution. So this true, di true distribution, they probably give you new, the, the new distribution, new variable, or it can be dis decided from the alternatives. It depends, right? It depends on the context. What you, however, must be then indicating is what's going to be my critical region and acceptance region. So hence, the working with the distribution is very, very important. So let's check. Uh, so for this one, then, uh, let's read carefully. So what's very important for me is not to be able to dis uh, pronounce well with the chickpeas. But for me, what's very important is whether I'm given the distribution. Because for the hypothesis testing, that's often very important. Then you then work with the, uh, the property of such distribution, right? whether it's normal, Poisson, or binomial. But for me, I'm very happy with this first example because it tells me the normal distribution. So then I know that it's going to be working either with the mu, or sigma, but I'm very happy that I'm given the standard deviation. All right, so then it's going to talk about type 1 or type, type 2 error. Let's get to the business of working with the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. That's, that's great. And for here, my friend, what we are given here is what? Oh la la, the, the, the alternative is going to be either the one tail or two tail, isn't it? So one tail, either it's either going to be less than or bigger than, depending on the left or right, uh, or two tail if it's not equal to, right? So here I see in this problem what that it's something with the decreased or less. You see, if it's something with the less, then very likely that it's going to be one tail. In details, this is going to be the left tail, isn't it? So for me, uh, my uh, null hypothesis is going to be the mu. The, the mean is going to be, in fact, 400. Uh, my alternative here is going to be who? It's actually going to be, oops, sorry, less than 400. So that, my friend, is the, what is it, the... Um, new and alternative hypothesis for this hypothesis testing. And this is a very, very, very important to indicate because this then inequality suggests that your acceptance region is going to be having the direction of the opposite, such as a bigger than or equal to. Your critical region, yes, you're right, is going to have, what is it, less than, you see. So this is very important to realize. Uh, uh, writing down the alternative hypothesis is very important because that gives you the direction for your uh, uh, um, acceptance region or critical region. So that's great. So let's get to it. Let's get to the business. So now I've decided the hypothesis. You need to then work with what distribution you're going to be working with. I'm very happy that I'm given the normal distribution. So I'm going to say x is distributed normally. Then let's go with my new hypothesis, which is a 400. 
and then I'm giving the population standard deviation which was a 10 however I'm taking the sample of 12 so you know that the sample standard deviation here is going to be what is it so not the sample the, the sample mean standard deviation here is going to be 10 over square root of 12 square is going to be my uh, way of writing down the population here so in the variable here so I'm very happy I'm very happy and now I'm going to do the type 1 error, but that's quite trivial, isn't it? Because we got the level of significance. The level of significance here was given as a 2%. So that's great. So I'm going to use that as just a 2%. So, so my alpha is going to be 0 0.02. So that's the type 1 error. I'm done. Okay? But for type 2 error, please remember, type 2 is working with what? Acceptance region. So I need to find the acceptance region first, uh, given the true distribution okay so that is a group and and yeah you can sometimes work with the uh the alternative hypothesis but i can't find my true mean there hence they give me the true mean of a mu of 395 so that's great that's great so I, I need to then decide i need to then define what my true distribution is let's have a look at the true distribution here but here's the thing what they have done here my friend is that they have shifted isn't it they have shifted for 395 and I'm talking. I'm, I'm using a different mean. So, but but I want to work with the same sort of form of this distribution for normal distribution. That's easily done by standardizing it. So I'm going to convert it from the x to z using this different mu. So my z after having translated is going to be the following. It is going to be given as the uh, z standardized is going to be x minus mu over sigma. So I'm trying to find the true mean after having standardized. Okay, so what we have then is going to be 395 minus 400. Oh la la. Over, what is it? The, uh, uh, it was a 10 over square root of 12. Okay, that's interesting. So then what do I have? It's going to be 5 year, negative 5, sorry. Then it cancels out. So what you have, what you end up hearing is a negative root 12 over 2. So if you factorize, if you simplify, that's 2. Root 3 cancels out, so it's negative root 3. So my true distribution, my true distribution is now going to be distributed of what? A negative root 3, but with the, uh, now, sorry, now I standardized, remember now I standardized, so then the sigma is going to be simply just 1. Okay, so that's great. That's great. Why have I got the uh, true distribution? Because I want to use it for the... Uh, Acceptance region. I want to use it for the acceptance region. Very good. So here, then I need to go back to my, what is it? Um, alternative hypothesis. So that's the alternative hypothesis that suggests that what? I got to find who? Probability of what? Uh, 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 X bigger than equal to whatever the acceptance region such that the probability here is going to be what? Uh, the alpha. Alpha was uh, 2%. So then I need, uh, what is it? 0 0.98 for the acceptance region. That, my friend, is going to be my acceptance region. That, my friend, is going to be my acceptance region. Where x was now, it's from the previous one, isn't it? It's from the previous part. This acceptance region must be defined before you change into the true distribution, okay? So that region must come from the x here. And then, yeah, you know, I got the mu and sigma. I got the mu and sigma. That means I can use the inverse normal distribution very quickly. So for here, what I'm going to do is Okay, so this is going to be same as what, my friend? Probability of x less than equal to a is going to be simply 0 0.02. So for that one, I'm going to just find that a using the inverse norm. So let's do it. So if I use the inverse norm, then I should be able to find the a, right? So let's suppose that I did that because now that's trivial because I got the mu and sigma for the x. So that a is going to be the uh, critical value. Okay, that's my critical value. All right, so then what do I do? Uh, what we're going to do here is the um, create the acceptance region. Okay, I'm going to create the acceptance region. The acceptance region for here was a bigger than or equal to a. But remember, I'm using it for z. So maybe I will standardize also. So for that one, it has to be standardized. So it needs to be a minus, but I'm going to use the previous mean here, 400 over the uh, 10 over square root of 10, square root of 12. Very good. So that, my friend, is the static that I'm going to use for the acceptance region for Z, you see? So that is going to be the same as, I'm, I'm, let me call it K. Can I use K? Sure, why not? I'm going to use K, so this is going to be probability of what? 
very, very, be very careful, be very careful. This is acceptance region, this is acceptance region, so it's going to be z bigger than k. Okay, so that is great. So bigger than, or bigger than equal, doesn't really matter because it's a continuous random variable, so it doesn't matter. But I got the value, and the region was bigger than, so I'm going to use it. However, that z is now def uh, def uh, defined as the following with the mu of negative root 3. And that, my friend, is going to be your beta. Sorry, that's, got, that's gonna be your, uh, what is it, uh, the, the type 2 error. So that's how you can find it. So you gotta be very careful because you need to understand what's gonna be my acceptance region or, or, or um, critical region depending on your alternative hypothesis. And then use that inequality, so use the CDF with the true distribution is what we are doing. Okay, so that's great. So let's have a look at the second example here. Um, I said this is the very kind. This is very kind because they didn't give the context in the paragraph and let you to decide, let you decide whether it's binomial distribution or not because they give you, they gave you that it's binomial distribution so you don't have to worry too much, you see, you don't have to worry too much. So for here, I'm also happy that I'm given the critical region. Then it says find the probability of a type 1 error. Well, here, instead of giving you the alpha, they give you the critical region here, isn't it? So then you need to wonder what your um, type 1 error is going to be. So type 1 error, so don't think the type 1 error is going to be always available as an alpha. You have to think of it as a condition of probability. So this is what critical region given the new hypothesis, isn't it? Okay, so what I'm going to do here is the critical region was, what is it? Probability of what? x bigger than or equal to 6. So this is going to be the CDF of the binomial distribution, but remember this is a discrete random variable. It's a little different from the normal because the normal distribution is a continuous random variable. What I'm trying to suggest here is, yes, for the purpose of the use of a calculator where every CDF is now programmed as a less than or equal to, I'm going to ch convert that as a 1 minus probability of who, but we got to be careful, my friend, you got to be careful. Its opposite inequality is, yes, x less than 6, but for the use of a calculator, we have to convert it to less than or equal to. But it ain't the same as less than or equal to 6. This is the discrete random variable to work with the integer value. So I'm going to do 1 minus probability of who, x less than or equal to 5 is what I'm going to decide. Okay, that is lovely, that is very good. And that is the probability that I'm going to get for the type 1 error because of the critical region. However, you need to understand that what distribution you're going to use, I'm going to use the distribution with the proportion of one third is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to define, oh, x is distributed binomially of the fixed number of trial, fixed number of the probability, that's it. Then you can perform the CDF to easily get the, uh, the, the type 1 error for this one. But of course, you can talk about the type 2 error, isn't it? Sorry, you can talk about the different distribution. We talked about the normal, we talked about the binomial, Let's talk about the Poisson. Uh, uh, but for normal and Poisson, they are likely to tell you that it's distributed by the normal Poisson respectively. However, for the binomial, they may not, like the exam question that we saw from the 2022 November. Uh, but then we need to then realize, oh, if it's not given, it's likely the binomial, that's the only distribution they, they, they might not tell you. So for that, we need to know that it's independent trial uh, by the Baronoid trial, uh, and also the fixed number of trial and fixed probability success. So let's have a look at this. So I got the, what is it? Oh, so this is interesting because now my alternative hypothesis uh, says that, that they actually presented, they presented the uh, different mean, right? So that's great. Okay, so here they have asked me to find the type 1 error, type 2 error of this kind. Okay, and then what I'm very happy with this question is, this is very kind. This question is too kind because they give you the critical region. You see, they gave you the critical region. Okay, not that bad. So for that, let's talk about the type 1 error. Okay, so type 1 error uh, is the, was it, probability of who, critical region, uh, given the null, right? So that's what I'm going to do with the type 1 error, okay? So for that, uh, I'm going to define my random error. The, the, so, so, well, let's use the critical uh region first. I'm given that it's bigger than equal to, bigger than equal to 15, but the sum of random variables, isn't it? So I'm going to maybe call it as a y, right? Oh, so then I'm going to have a probability of who y bigger than equal to 15 is the type 1 error that I need to work with. However, remember, I'm given Poisson distribution for individual random variable. It was given, what is it? Poisson of who? Da, 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 one for the random variable x. But now this is the sum of random variable. And yes, 
uh, the sum of random variable of a Poisson preserve that it's Poisson, not the linear combination. Don't forget, if it's a linear combination of the random variable, it does not uh, preserve the Poisson, only the sum of each individual. So here, then I'm going to say, oh, okay, so that was my random variable. So for my y, which is a sum, it's going to be just adding all the, uh, what is it, the, uh, the, the mu, the parameter of the each x. So each x were having the mean of how much was a 1, according to the null hypothesis, I got the 10 random variables, so the mean is going to be now 10. So that's the Poisson distribution that I'm going to perform for finding the type one, type 1 error in this case. And don't forget, this is, what is it? This current random variable, isn't it? This is a this current random variable, so you got to be careful to put it in the calculator. So what I'm going to do is 1 minus probability of y less than or equal to discrete countable, you got to distinguish. So I'm going to go up to only 14 is what I've got. Okay, so that's how I'm going to get for the type 1 error in this example. However, we can also talk about who? Type 2 error. Let's talk about the type 2 error, my friend. That's the acceptance origin given the true distribution. So for true distribution, if they give you, okay, I think the mu was a 2. Sure, why not? So then I'm going to de define the true distribution now. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to define the true distribution, y prime, Poisson, but how many random variables? Uh, 10, but each of them has the mean of what now? 2. So that's great. So now your Poisson distribution has ooh, uh, 20. Then I need to define not the critical region, but acceptance region from the previous example. So here, the critical region was bigger than or equal to 15. Your acceptance region then will be less than or equal to 14, isn't it? Because it's the opposite for the discrete random variable. So now I'm going to go probability of what? Um, I'm, I'm y prime for the acceptance region is going to be less than or equal to 14. So that's how you're going to perform for the type 1 or type 2 error in this, ki in this case. So the, 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 the previous three examples for the normal, binomial, or uh, Poisson, they were very kind actually. They were very kind. Why? Because for the first case, they gave you the alpha already. For the second case and third case, they give you the critical region. Often the, the hard question is when the critical region is not given automatically, but instead alpha is given, but for the, uh, for the binomial Poisson, you have to define what the critical region is going to be by using something like the inverse, right? You do know the inverse binomial is available in the calculator, uh, but for the Poisson, how to find the acceptance region or critical region with just the alpha will be the hard problem. That's the difficult problem. And obviously you should uh, prepare for that as well. But if I quickly go back to the question that we had from the exam, right? So, so for this one, we said, Right, this is a discrete random variable because we are counting the number of students, right? I think so. Yeah, so we are counting the number of students, you see? So because it's a number of students, this is a discrete random variable. This is between either, this is either binomial or Poisson. That's great. However, now the trial is independent. We have a fixed, we have a fixed number of trials. How many? Uh, we got the sample of 80. And then we got the fixed probability of success as well here, isn't it? That the probability was given as the 30%. So we are now taking the uh, hypothesis testing on your proportion. Let's see. Let's see the proportion. What does it say? The proportion here. Uh, and then, you know, now I decided what the distribution is going to be. And then, you know, for the binomial, we often to check with the proportion. But for that, you must indicate whether it's going to be bigger than, less than, or not equal to for your alternative hypothesis, isn't it? So they may give you the, the inequality right away, or they write in context of the problem. Has it increased? Has it decreased? Has it changed? If it's a change that's not equal to, so that's going to be two-tailed, isn't it? So your acceptance region and critical region may, may be different. So we got to be very careful. Let's read it carefully with the context of the problem where we can get the sense of the inequality. So here it says what? Ba -ba 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 -ba. So I'm, I'm playing like a puzzle, isn't it? Yeah, maybe that's not good, but but it's it's only I think good if you had a number of practice done already that you know what the type of the question is gonna be. Then for me, I, it's really like finding the error in the coding. Okay, so then oh, I gotta find the error here in the code to change the parameter. And so here for me, decided campaigns number of students open. She has assumed that the um, decided to take the randomness. She will reject the choose at least. All right, there you go. Reject the null. All right, there you go, right? At least, I got the word at least that's bigger than equal to, isn't it? So that, my friend, is gonna be what? That's gonna be a critical region. That, my friend, is critical region. So if I decide uh, uh, X is distributed Poisson, sorry, my bad, binomial, uh, of the, uh, 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 how many? 80, and then my proportion, 
And I'm saying that my new hypothesis is going to be who? The proportion is who? Uh, da, 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 uh, 0 0.3, that's a 30%. And my, uh, uh, the critical region here, my friend, is going to be what? Uh, pro uh, proportion is now what? Um, oh, hold on a sec, sorry. Uh, the principal school concern only 30% of our students are choosing healthy options from school canteen. She organized a campaign, so I, I am reading carefully. Uh, 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 eating and decide to test if the campaign has increased my bad <laughs> increase okay so there you go increase my bad increase huh, thank you so uh, you should read it carefully increase so I know that the proportion is now bigger than 0 0.3 okay so that my friend is the what is it the, the, the alternative hypothesis okay so that's great so then I'm not given the alpha I'm not given the alpha so I'm going to then get the probability of who uh, 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 the, 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 the type 1 error. So let's have a look at the type 1 error. Which you know, this is the critical region given the new, uh, retain the new, right? So for me, I'm very uh, happy because they have given you the critical region here. It says I'm going to reject the new. What if it's a uh, reject the new? That indicates that this is going to be critical region. If it's uh, at least uh, 31 students, so I'm going to have a look at the x uh, bigger than equal to 31 because that's the at least. And then we know that this is going to be 1 minus. For the purpose of use of a calculator, you have to change the less than equal to property of x less than equal to 30 is what I'm going to decide. And for that, I'm going to use the proportion of 0.3 from the null distribution. Okay, so that is going to be type 1 error. And then how would you decide the type 2 error, my friend? Type 2 error, yes, let's have a look at the definition of type 2 error. What was it? Doo -doo -doo. Type 2 is going to be probability of acceptance uh, given the true mean, true proportion, whatever. Now, we were given that the uh, true proportion here, now it makes what? Uh, 40%, right? So that is my uh, uh, a proportion that I'm going to use for the true distribution. That's great. And so probability of x prime, and now I'm going to use acceptance region, my friend. I'm going to now use acceptance region. They said the critical region was at least 31. So acceptance region has to be less than equal to, what is it? 30, very good. Less than equal to 30 will be the acceptance region. So that is going to be my uh, type to error, okay? So it really depends on the uh, distribution. And uh, uh, the, the, it would be even more difficult problem if they did not give you the, the region, but gave you the alpha, uh, the acceptance region. Then you need to then decide what the uh, critical region, acceptance region is based on your alpha. Okay, so that involves like the inverse distribution, uh, which is readily available for the normal distribution, but you have to think a bit more for the binomial Poisson. So those are the difficult problem we should definitely practice that, okay? But these are like a very kind problem because they are feeding the interval for you, which is a, a critical region. But yeah, you know, the purpose of this, the video really was to see if you read the question, if you read the keyword, if you find the Kobayashi, the usual suspect of Kobayashi, then you, then you decide, oh, okay, this Kobayashi has all the list of this type of a problem that can appear, so I, I have to get my mind straight. I have to get my mind straight that this, question might involve with this type 1, type 2 error, things like that, then I got to be very careful with my parameter, what's going to be my new, what's going to be my alternative, can I derive the critical region, can I talk about the true mean, true proportion based on what we have, okay? So those, getting the mind, setting the mindset straight, setting the mind straight is what I mean by the imperative knowledge. You read the Kobayashi, then you decide what algorithm you're going to use, then you read so that you can then find all the missing parameters that you need for your uh, 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 line of code to work. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much the review that I wanted to go over for the AI. Oh, well, not really. Let's have a look at the question number 17. Beautiful, beautiful problem. So here, yeah, it's talking about the, the sum, uh, and sum, and sum of sine and cosine, right? So this I want to emphasize a bit more because what we often do is we often disregard the algebra, right? You don't uh, get to multiply off as often as the AI students do. You don't get to simplify as often as the AI students do because we are all 
all the questions are readily available with the calculator, but that's a misconception. Uh, I want you to realize many of the topics actually can be solved very easily by hand. You don't have to put too many equations on your calculator, but obviously, obviously it's very helpful because sometimes finding the solution in a numerical value or the final solver, graphic, sol graphic solution, they're, be they're beautif beautiful, you should be able to use it. But some questions are re requiring extensive algebra just like the AA students, so you have to practice by hand. And the complex number, is a very, very good example to indicate that this is uh, requiring a lot of algebra, especially with the complex number of multiplication, division, and then the law of exponents. So let's have a look. So whenever you're encouraged to either add or subtract the sum of, uh, either add or subtract the sines or cosine, you're using the complex number. We are working with the cosine, you know that it's gonna be the real part, right? So when I'm reading this, I'm not, I don't know about the sunrise or whatever, but if you want to talk about the duration, you know that it's going to be the difference of it. So from this, I didn't read what the, you know, what the Taipei was or midnight Taipei. I don't care. I do realize that it's going to be the difference of this uh, sunrise and sunset. Okay, I'm going to talk about the difference of it. And for that, then I realize, okay, that's something to do with the complex number. I know I'm going to use the order form. I know I got to be very keen on factorization and things like that, right? So you think imperative knowledge, then what category, what part of a complex number you're gonna associate. This is, not, this is not going to use the vector, this is not gonna use the Cartesian form, right? So there are many, many different categories of complex number. You don't have to use all of it, but here you know that it's going to be working with the factorization with the all those numbers. So let's have a look. So for that category, for that part of the complex number that you know that you have to be very keen on the period of a complex number, isn't it? So you need to make sure that uh, if the period is different of the trigonometry, you cannot use the method. So you have to get the one straight. You can add like extra constant there, that's no problem, but you must be able to work with what? The same period. So that's the thing that you also have to uh, consider when you see that problem, you see. And you know, this example not only in indicates the imperative knowledge, but also the constant practice with the algebra. So let's have a look. So if I want to have like a sum of a sign like this, you know that it's going to be the, then the, the same thing as imaginary part of 2 times e to the power of i 8x uh, uh, plus 3, e to the power of i 8x plus 3. That is equal. So that's what I mean by the algebra. You work with now the expansion or factorization. So for this one, what we can do is, yes, you're going to factorize by e to the power of i 8x. So that's great. So what's going to be left over, my friend? So the quotient here is going to be uh, 2 plus 3 e to the power of i3, isn't it? So yes, we have to be comfortable with the factorization. And then you put this in the calculator, right? That you put in the calculator. That is great. But sometimes they might say, oh, find the exact value of the argument. So that means you cannot use the calculator. You have to solve by hands use of the trigonometry. Right? So that's what I mean by, please get used to the use of uh, 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 by hands, okay? Algebra matters. So here are the imaginary part, what is it? e to the power of i, 8x, that's great, times that one, now going to be put in the single order form by the help of calculator, that's great. So that's going to be r, e to the power of uh, i, whatever the argument that was, that you would get from the calculator. Then, I, by the multiplication property here of the exponent, you know it is going to be r, the modulus here, e to the power, I can combine the argument by the factorization of i, I have 8x plus alpha is what I've got, and that's the imaginary part, isn't it? So then I know that this is going to be r times the sine of the 8x plus alpha. So as you can see, we can find those modulus and argument to combine them together. So this is very, very important. We can't just put this in the calculator right away. Uh, we will do so, of especially of describing that part. However, rest is just the algebra. So make sure you are able to expand and factorize fairly quickly, fairly quickly. It's very, very important. We have to practice. Uh, sure, you know, like the sign, sign here. First thing first, check with the complete uh, the period. But you know what? I think if they really twist the problem, if they really twist the problem, they may give you like the cosine here. You see, if you have a sum of sine and cosine, what should you do? Well, it's not that bad actually. It's, it's exactly the same thing. However, you just have to realize that you can convert the cosine into sine using the complementary angle, isn't it? So you know the cosine theta is the same as a sine pi over two plus theta. So you can do that, right? So you can convert the cosine into sine, 
and then add them together. So 99%, yes, they'll usually give you, every, every time usually give you the uh, sum of on equal trick ratio, such as a sum of sines or sum of cosine. However, even if they give you with the same period, but different sine and cosine, no problem. You can convert them using the complementary angle is, my, is what I'm saying. So if I just quickly remind you again, cosine theta minus pi over two is gonna be sine theta. So you should also be able to convert them. Okay, very important. That should do. But now, yeah, you know, as you know, okay, as soon as I see, I'm gonna add them together. It's asking me the sum of signs. I know I'm gonna use complex number. I don't care about the, uh, you know, the Cartesian form or vector form, or use of the vector for the complex number to demonstrate for this question alone will require either polar or all the form, whatever suits you. And then working with the imaginary part because we're associating the sign. But on the process, I know I'm gonna have to factorize well with exponential like that, and then only the use of a calculator should be done when I factorize this with the to the power of uh, two ti, then that is the value only that I'm going to be keen on use of a calculator. Things like that should be in your mind already before doing the problem. So that's the first half, isn't it? The second half is to be able to do this quickly, accurately, and then demonstrate well at the end with the sine function like that, okay? So again, please remember imperative knowledge. You reach, find the Kobayashi, you find the keyword, then get your mind straight, get your mind uh, set up for that particular question, and then find the right keywords to complete the category, com use the preamble to generate the code you like, okay? Then it's fine, yes, okay, so the rest is simple. So yeah, you know, just, sorry. This is a review of 2022 November. So what I wanna talk about here is that for the AI, what is very important here is you know what algorithm you're gonna take, okay? There are so many algorithms here, you know, topic one, complex number, you know, big both, matrix algebra, topic two, modeling, right? Exponential sine function, cosine function, tangent function, what do they tell me, right? You need to understand what the polynomial is gonna tell me. Topic three, geometry and trigonometry, what is going? To, what is telling me? What is a fine transformation? There's so many topics. Topic four, hypothesis testing, chi-square test for independence and distribution and it, 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 it. We, there's so many, so many different kinds, so many different kinds. But when you see the problem, what they are testing you is not being able to prove what how they are working, but to use it like ChatGPT. If you ask ChatGPT, he give you, he give it to you. You gotta give it to them. You gotta give it to them. Okay, that's what the spirit of no chora but juria. That means no chicken. You don't have to be scared, but kick it. Okay, with the right momentum, with the right category. It is the essence of imperative knowledge. Okay? But yeah, that's pretty much it for me today. I will see you in the next revision video for the May 2023. Thank you.